Welcome everybody to part two of my Unity VR guide. Today I'll be covering how to interact with objects using grab interactables. I'll go over how different movement types work, how to fine tune interactions by changing attributes, how to properly attach objects to our hands, and how to use objects that we are holding. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. So loading into our project, we'll be navigating to the part two grab interactable scene and you'll be greeted with this, a very simple scene that has a plane. Uh, I've placed a table object here. And if you notice right here, there is the XR origin. So when you spawn in, you'll be right in front of this little table that I've made. And the idea is we're going to create XR grab interactable objects and placing them here so we can easily interact with them. Now, opening up the XR origin, you'll notice that I've made a few changes here as well in the left and right hand controller. I got rid of the ray interactor and replaced it with the XR direct interactor and a sphere collider. And the XR direct interactor is gonna allow us to interact with these objects directly so we don't use a ray to grab things. And the sphere collider is how we do it. Uh, you have to set the sphere collider to is trigger. And then also I gave it a radius of one or 0.1. Uh, and that's gonna be about the size of our hands. So we won't be grabbing things from far away. In future videos, I'll go over XR direct interactors and ray interactors in more detail, but for this one, I want to focus on grab interactables. And the last thing I want to point out here is I added new hand models. So if you go into here, prefabs, these are the new hand models. Now that we've gone over everything that's in this scene, we can start making our grabbable objects. So I'm going to start off by creating a sphere. I'm going to name it ball and I'm going to zero out its positioning. And I am going to now position it right above the table. There we are. And I'm going to scale it down a bit, about 0.2 straight across, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.2. With our ball in place, we can now make it an interactable object. And all we have to do is add component, type in XR grab interactable, there it is, add that. And you'll notice that it also added a rigid body to it. And that's because XR grab interactable uses rigid body. Without it, it can't function. From here, if we wanted to start the scene, we'd actually be able to interact with this ball, but I do want to showcase the different movement types with grab interactables. So to do that, we're going to have to copy and duplicate this. So control D, we'll duplicate it. And we'll take this ball and we will move it over here. And we will take this one and move it over here. And just to better differentiate it, I'm also gonna apply three different colors. So I'm gonna go into the materials here. Uh, here we go, grab interactables, and I'm gonna color that one green, this one blue, and this one black. To keep these even more organized, I'm also gonna rename them. I'm gonna have this be the instantaneous movement. Uh, let's see, and then this one I'm gonna have be kinematic. And last, I'm going to have this one be velocity tracking. Now, if you're asking yourself what is instantaneous kinematic and velocity tracking, well, those are going to be the different movement types that we can apply to grab interactable objects. And you'll be able to find that right here. So to make these correspond correctly, I'm going to click on instantaneous. That's on instantaneous. Good. I'm going to click on kinematic. I'm going to switch that to kinematic. And then I'm going to click on velocity tracking and now that's velocity tracking. And so if we start up the scene, we'll be able to see how these interact differently. So you'll notice that when we grab the instantaneous ball that it tracks perfectly with our hand. But when we grab the kinematic ball, it'll actually have a little bit of a delay to it. Even more interesting is when we take both balls and try to uh, put them through the table, it'll go right through. Now, the reason for this is best showcased by interacting with the velocity tracking ball. 
and you'll notice that the instantaneous ball doesn't really interact too well or easily with the velocity tracking ball, but the kinematic ball interacts with it as if it had real physics. And the reason is, it does. Now, the reason for this is the XR Grab Interactable script will change a few things in our kinematic and instantaneous ball. For the instantaneous ball, it will turn off its rigid body, and for the kinematic ball, it will turn on is kinematic in its rigid body. And that's best showcased by interacting with the velocity tracking ball. Last will interact with the velocity tracking ball, and you'll notice that it acts a lot like the kinematic ball, and it has that delay. But where it's really different is it will interact with colliders uh, with or without rigid bodies. It doesn't matter. And so when we put our hand through the table, you'll notice that it stays outside of the table. Now that we have seen how the movement types work, we're going to go in here and look at some different attributes. Uh, starting off, you can see the interaction layer mask. This is where you'd assign the object to a different layer if you didn't want to interact with other objects. Uh, coming down a little further, track position is how you'd get it to stop tracking the position of the hand when you grab it. So if you just wanted it to rotate, you could leave track rotation turned on. And that goes for track rotation too. If you didn't want it to rotate, but you wanted it to track position, you could just turn that off. Uh, you also have smooth position and smooth rotation. And if you play with those, that can be used to simulate an object being heavy, right? It's going to lag behind a little more if it's a giant hammer that you're swinging. You can also prevent the object from being thrown when it's detached by turning that on or off. And also tweak the little tiny uh, attributes here to further refine how the object is thrown when you release it. And last I want to show is attach ease in time. And you can tweak this to showcase how an uh, object can be passed around or picked up. And it gives this kind of cool floating experience. Now that we've gone over all the attributes in Grab Interactable, we need to discuss attach points. So not all objects we interact with are perfectly shaped balls that doesn't matter where they attach. A good example would be a gun. So if you go into prefabs, Grab Interactables, you'll see I left us a gun to play with. And I'm going to go ahead and move this ball back a little bit. Leave this gun here. There we are. And when we start the scene, You'll notice that when we pick up the gun, it actually doesn't attach where we need it to attach. And this is how we're going to fix that. To fix this, we need to create an attach point. And you do that by adding an empty object to the object that you're trying to give an attach point to. So this gun, I'm going to name it attach point. And we need to position this transform in a way that will attach correctly to our hand. And so you do that by making sure this is set to pivot and local. And once we've set that, we're going to want the axis for the Y, Z, and X to be in the correct orientation. And so the Y axis you want pointing up, so that's set to go. The Z axis, which is this blue arrow, you want it to be pointing forward, so we're gonna have to rotate that. And then you're going to want the x-axis pointing towards the palm of your hand. And so to rotate this, we're going to go here. Looks like it has to rotate around the y-axis. There we go. And now it's rotating correctly, and it's a little forward. We're going to want to move this back a little bit. And that should work perfectly. And so last, we just need to click on the pistol itself, since it has the XR Grab Interactable. And you're going to want to move the Attach Transform right into here. And so if we start up the scene now, you'll notice that it's attaching to the hand correctly. Now, holding on to this gun is fun, but it's a little more fun if we could shoot it. So in order to fire the gun, we're gonna have to go over a few things. Uh, really quick, I wanna point out to you guys that I've made a fire bullet script. Uh, nothing too fancy here. Uh, it has a game object, a bullet object that it's gonna instantiate. Uh, it's gonna play a little gun sound when we activate this function. And then it's gonna destroy the bullet after five seconds. And uh, yeah, add a little velocity to it. So that's all that is. 
And in order to call that function, we're gonna have to use something called interactable events. And once we drop this down, you'll see a bunch of different interactable events that we can play with, but the one we're looking for is activated. And activated is called when we pull the trigger finger or a trigger button. And so we're gonna add a plus here and we're gonna drag this into here because this contains the script that we're after, right? The fire bullet script. And you go down to here, fire, and just like that, we'll be able to fire the gun. With that, we're all set. We've learned how to make interactable objects, play with movement types, mess around with attributes, um, how to use attach points and interact with our objects. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It would mean the world to me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.